Hearts torn in every way So ferry cross the Mersey Cause this land's the place I love And here I'll stay Hi, welcome to a wet and windy pier head. I'm Steve Peters. Join me for my ferry across the Mersey journey. I picked the Mersey ferries for this film as a regular ferry commuter in recent years between Wirral and Liverpool, having grown up in the city of Liverpool and with family connections to seafaring in the River Mersey. My grandfather was in the Royal Navy in World War I and after the war became a master mariner with a White Star Line carrying passengers and cargo between the Canary Islands and Liverpool. In his early career, my father was a shipping agent for Liverpool firm Baker Britt. There have been ferries crossing the Mersey for over 900 years, with the Doomsday Book recording a ferry crossing the river from Seacombe, the narrowest point of the river in 1086. These early ferries being rowed by the Benedictine monks from Birkenhead Priory. In those times, ferries were often delayed by the weather, so lodging was built in the Priory to enable travellers to wait out the weather. Over the years, there have been 10 ferry services across the Mersey. In 1815, the Mersey ferries took a technological leap with the introduction of the first steam-powered ferry. For the first time, ferry services could operate to a timetable. By 1840, all 10 ferry services across the Mersey were being serviced by paddle steamers. During the First World War, the steamers Iris and Daffodil were taken out of service from Wallasey to be used as troop ships in the naval raid on Zeebrugge in Belgium. This occurred on St George's Day, the 23rd of April 1918. Eleven Victoria Crosses were awarded for bravery in the Zeebrugge raid. In recognition of their courageous part in the raid, King George V granted permission to add the royal prefix to both names. Before the opening of the railway tunnel in 1886, the ferries were the only way of crossing the river. In 1894, Trains were carrying 25,000 passengers and ferries were carrying 44,000 passengers a day. In one day, the Liverpool Wirral service had over 100 arrivals and departures. The railway was predicted to be the end of the ferry as a means of crossing the river. However, in 1919, the Seacombe ferry alone carried 22 million passengers in a year. More significant was the opening of the Queensway Road Tunnel, which resulted in a huge decline in passenger numbers. In 1950, the ferries carried almost 30 million passengers, but with the increase in car ownership in 1970, passenger numbers had declined to about 7 million. In 1971, the ferries came under further threat with the opening of the Kingsway, a second road tunnel, and numbers of passengers declined to four to 5,000 passengers a day. The Mersey ferries came under further pressure in 1977 when a bill was put before Parliament to discontinue the ferry services. However, the bill failed to get support and the ferries survived. After a decline in commuter traffic using the ferries, in 1990, Mersey Travel relaunched the ferries as a historic heritage and visitor attraction, with 50-minute river cruises up and down the Mersey and a cruise up the Manchester Ship Canal. In 1996, Mersey Ferries won the Merseyside Tourist Board Visitor Attraction of the Year, and currently are a high scoring attraction on TripAdvisor. The Mersey Ferries played a big part in Liverpool 2008 Capital of Culture celebrations where they carried a record number of passengers in that year. On Monday the 21st of July 2008 the Royal Daffodil operated a special cruise to witness the parade of sail and departure for the tall ships. The current fleet has served the river for over five decades with the Royal Iris of the Mersey and Snowdrop reaching their 50th birthday in 2009. As part of the centennial of the First World War, artist Sir Peter Blake designed the Razzle Dazzle livery as a recognition of the dazzle camouflage painted on naval vessels during the First World War. So what of the future? Mersey Ferries has recently announced a new 20 year plan, which may include the closure of the Woodside Terminal. However, this has indicated that there are plans for the future, so hopefully there will be ferries across the Mersey in years to come. <laughs>